thank you very much. And I'm your host, Megan Van Petten. And today we have G Haven Esports with Dexter Carr. Welcome, Dexter. Hey, how are you doing today? I am great. More importantly, how are you? It's a beautiful day today. Started out kind of cloudy, but now the sun is out. I'm just really, really happy. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's a nice share. The sun is out here in Chicago, too. It's so nice that we're part of the endemic. Indeed. 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 So um, I guess I'd start by saying we're so happy to have you part of the Esports Trade Association. Um, You know, that goes without saying. But one of my first questions I'd love to ask you is, how did you get involved in esports? I mean, I've always been a gamer. I've always loved playing video games. Um, so I guess it's more so, let's just say, of the, because esports has that connotation of being more so competitive. I was just more so the guy that I loved being, if you're being more casual. But you know, as I got older, my brothers were more competitive. They got into it more, just kind of being around it and just like competing and playing. That's what really kind of drew me to it. Uh, I mean, I was always a regular athlete. I ran track. I played soccer and basketball in high school. I've been in college as well. But um, this video gaming has always just been that one place where, you know, I can fit in and I just love to do. And so I guess for me, it's less more so about the esports side. I think it's just the video gaming as a whole. Did you say video gaming as a whole? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, tell me. What do you mean by video gaming as a whole? So when it comes to when I think of esports, even though I do enjoy and appreciate the competitive side of things, esports, when I hear the word, it has more of a connotation of the competitive side of it. And for me, like G Haven, we want to be able to bring the, the bridge, the gap between the casual and the competitive. And so me being on the casual side of things, um, and then me also associating with people who are more competitive. I want to find that middle ground. And that's one one thing G Haven is striving to do. So tell me a little bit more about the middle ground. Of course, of course. So a lot of times, uh, one of the things that we've kind of realized, not just in the research and prior to creating G Haven, it was in, in early stages of, and creating and establishing it, there's this divide between uh, the the casuals and the pros and the gap is like huge and so a lot of times i mean either the pros you play with themselves or they're highly competitive play amongst themselves and there's no way where normally really really isn't a way to bridge that gap because the competition and the gameplay is so uh not just divided but like the, the level and skill is so the gap is so big sometimes it's just not fun to play when you're getting beat so badly but the one thing that both sides have in common is a love for the game. And so that's that middle ground that we choose, we choose to focus on is that love for the game itself. And that's where we bring people together. It is no fun to be playing, you know, above or really below your skill competency. I mean, that's just basic human nature. Mm-hmm. So um, tell me, it, does G Haven have a solution for that? Yeah, so we one of the things that we do, uh, we take the so there's this concept in the, the gaming world called uh, let's plays, where basically you no know, different streamers and content creators they will play a game, they'll stream a game, and people will watch them. But we take that that we take that uh that genre and make it more literal, where all the games that we play are very inclusive. So going from the popular Among Us or Fall Guys to more so like Monster Hunter and uh, Final Fantasy XIV games like that, games where we can interact together. So there's that that equalizer in terms of, it's not just one versus the other, but we're all working together. And so that is one of the ways that we are aiming for that. We're we're building that community where we help each other get better. Whereas we're able to bring up the skill level at the same time, not in the means of isolation and bring more casuals into competitive, more of a space where we can able to interact with each other in a way of form of bonding and creating that place where we bring people together. Would you say that there's a traditional sport that does that better than video game or comparatively? 
a lot of traditional sports, granted they are team based, but the, the beauty when it comes to like video gaming, it's a combination of both individual and a team. Whereas, and there are also games where the point of the game is to work together, not against opposing other real life players, but more so against the, the game itself. And so when it comes to traditional sports, does it work with team building? Absolutely. You have to work together in order to defeat another opposing team working together. And we see that also in games like Dota, League of Legends, things like that. But that's where, like I would say Dota and League of Legends, those games where it's actual two opposing teams fighting against, uh, two opposing teams fighting against each other is where that similarity in terms of with traditional sports, but esports go to step beyond and creates other types of games where we can, where it's, there's less PVP where I'm fighting against you, but hey, let's work together, bring different skill sets to reach an end goal. And so that is where I believe the, the where traditional sports kind of fall short and where uh, esports can definitely uh, take hold, take advantage of that. Fascinating. So tell me, what inspired you to create G Haven? It all started, so it started started one summer. I was hanging out with a friend at my apartment. I had just graduated from grad school back at Penn State. We are. <laughs> um, and it was, a, it was a Friday afternoon, and we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. And the original, and we, like, we thought of different things, like you know, maybe going out to the bars or whatever, but it was like, we were just in my place. I was cooking food. He was playing video games. And it was just like, you know, he suggested, why don't we just do this? Like, go to Samaria, this is what we do. Have some combine, combining a bar and arcade. I'm like, okay. And when we looked it up. There were, there were places like that, but not anywhere close by. Like, the closest place to that really to us at the time was like what we saw was in Atlanta, Georgia, where it kind of fit exactly that. And we just realized that it's so niche that there should be places like this everywhere you go. And that's where the original idea had came as a, and which is where the philosophy started to form of G Haven as a next a center point to bring people together, to recreate that, that feeling, the homey feeling that your friends come over to your place to, to just hang out, play video games and bond. Um, because you no know, video games played a very important role in our lives in terms of just uh, the relationship building that we have with our close friends, one of, one of the pillar, core pillars that we had in common and just that, that held our friendship together. Um, and so we realized that, you know, we wanted to bring people together. So the original idea was to have a physical space. But over time, we realized that it shouldn't be a, a specific place that people come to. This it should be more of an idea that, that that people should come together, and a way to bring them together can be through video gaming. And that's kind of where G Haven took off. It was more so about bringing people together, bringing the world together through video gaming, and the realization that video gaming has such an impact in our lives that we become more aware of the power that it has. Because when you pick up a controller you lose your identity in the sense of it, we're less about you know male female black or white you no know, whatever you no know, gay straight but it doesn't matter who you are according to the console you're player one and player two and what brings us together is the love of the game that we're playing it doesn't matter for rivals or competitors we love the game that must we're playing it together that's bringing us together so that's the main focus of what g haven is all about it's so interesting that you share that story because i remember when I met you, you talked about that same story and it was such a pivotal point for you um, that as you went down that journey, your co-founder, you know, decided to go in a different direction. And, you know, you, you hear that a lot. Um, two people have an idea, they create something and then the, the journey changes for one. And so what I really admire is that you were so amicable about your direction that you guys were taking and you then, um, 
put the backpack on and went on your own. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And it was scary. It sure. really was. Because like the whole purpose of this thing we were creating, it was it was at the time it was less about, you know, the the philosophy or like the 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 angle was more so like a project, you know, that you no know, me and one of my best friend was creating together. Right. And so like when you know the separation happened, it really hurt because I felt like I was alone. Right. And, uh, and that's one of my biggest fears. And so like it was like, how do I like we we accomplish so much together people were looking yeah. at it it was just like how do i do this and just i was there to find the strength got the motivation to keep pushing forward to get me to this point that is an amazing story and i must share I'll, i i will just never forget when i myself entered high school i i was a imagine a leader that cheered <laughs> and um i will just never forget as long as I live when it was tryouts in my freshman year and my partner just walking into tryouts decided not to try out. Mm. And I had no one to try out with. And um, I just decided to do it on my own. A whole, you know, um, act or show, I can't even remember what it's called, a cheer. And it just didn't work by myself at all. And um, I did the worst of the team, you know, yeah. and I knew I did. And the coach though, let me be on the team because I didn't give up. And I actually, had I done the routine with my partner, I probably wouldn't have made the team because I was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was just not <laughs> grooving it, but that tenacity and that spirit, you know, th there's something to be said in, even though our partner isn't going to continue our journey, it doesn't we mean that we have to put down our own backpack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just a great message. And it just made me think of something, you know on my journey. And as, as a result, I, I didn't even make it through that first year. I was just not athletic enough, or there's just a heck of a lot more to that sport than, than people give credit for. Cheerleading is not about being cute and looking in a skirt, or it's really about being a performer and a gymnast and a dancer. Yeah. And, yeah. um, it, it wasn't just because I lacked a partner why I was last in my points. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, kudos to all the cheerleaders. That is a scary sport. I mean, like, just everything y'all be able to do, like, a lot of my good friends are uh, cheerleaders and also a gymnast as well. And I'm like, I mean, gymnast is great for me. That's a practical thing. But for what they're able to do, that is like, you know what? Because I'll be scared to have up my mind to do some, some stuff they do. Yeah, yeah, agree. Yep. Yeah. And kudos for you to sticking with your leadership. And, you know, tell us what's next for G Haven. Oh, wow. So much. So mm -hmm. uh, the biggest thing right now, uh, we're actually working with a company called Kiwi Tech and we're creating a really cool uh, fundraising tool that takes the ideas of a game -a and makes it more accessible to the, the everyday person. So effectively, we're taking, we're creating a program that allows us to uh, track. So it's a monthly subscription, but allows us to take, create a program that allows our users to be able to have their hours that they play tracked. And that amount of hours, the amount of time gets converted into a dollar amount, which is then donated to a cause and foundation of their choice. 100% of it. Well, that's outstanding. Yeah. Um, and how do you keep track of that? Is it through the gamification app? Yes. Yes. It will allow us to, um, uh, the user, uh, when they create the app, but also uh, in that, it will allow us to track and keep a um, record of how many hours they play on a monthly basis. So they have a monthly report of how many hours they played and how much they, they made so they can really see over time, you know, the impact that they make. 
because the whole point is I know for especially for the end user, every little bit counts. And so we want we want to put back into uh, mainstream of the act of charity and philanthropy as you no know, a, a strong way to give back to the community, give back to you know causes that you care about. And one of the other things that we're doing right now, actually April is the one year anniversary of our of us being on Twitch. And so one of the things that we're doing is we're doing a month long uh, charity for uh, mental illness and mental health awareness through the or, or foundation called NAMI. And so we you know this this past year has been really rough and tough on everybody. Um, you know, not just ourselves as a company trying to you know make sure that we survive through being a new business surviving in 2020 through the pandemic, but also just uh, emotionally mentally for a lot of people, a lot of people lost uh, others, their different the, the different uh, paths that people took down. And it's just, there's a lot of changes that happen and it stressed a lot of people out. And even though we're coming down to the end of it, there's still scars from that. And so we want to even more so as we get ready for uh, mental health month in May, do we really pay attention and we like, talk about that and raise that money like hey guys raise that awareness so you know it's it's okay to talk it's okay to find that help unique mental health is a key part of someone's health and wellness as a whole and we, we can't just keep it in and fight the battle on ourselves because when we're alone the mom the instant you think you're alone that's when you start to lose the battle and so we want to make sure that through all through everything we do through all of our streams to all of our content creators every time we put our voice out there for for this whole month even into next month we 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 make sure we let people know that hey you know mental health is a real thing and we're also just being open with our own stories to help motivate and show being to have some vulnerability of how you know we're choosing to fight and how, how we're choosing to keep going strong and that's really great, Dexter, that you're doing that now and through the month of May, and I'm sure through the, the course of your life, um, obviously community and giving back and raising awareness and mental health, you're really committed to. May I ask um, what got you involved in having this sort of purpose? This first year has been very rough on on everybody, you know, especially with me, like in uh, just building this company from uh, from from scratch, starting over with you know the loss, the separation of my previous co-founder, that that really hurt. Uh, I mean, not just the fact that because of COVID we were in different proximities, um, but then just that separation, you know, just added more to it, the fuel to the flame and. Like with that, and people usually say, don't go into business with your best friend. And, you know, I understand that now. And I never really had that time to truly grieve because I felt as if I had, I, I couldn't. Because if I did, then I would lose traction. I would, I would end up failing. And it was just, it took a toll for a while because he was one of the people that I would always talk to you all the time. Like you always have that friend. We talk yeah. to you very, very frequently. And uh, no, that was the guy that's like, hey man, I need something. And I'm like, no, I need someone to talk to. Or we always joke around and we were always hanging around each other. It was just like, like we were like brothers, like family. And so like, it would really, really hurt. And even now, like, like I'm the only reason I, I could get through this is because like all the lessons that he taught me, I paid close attention and I'm channeling, you know, everything that, you know, our, our friendship gave because the only way it's the only way I've been able to find ways all, all the lessons that he taught all the you know the, the, the challenges that he gave me to overcome and become a better leader uh but that's for me has been just very 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 difficult and if I didn't have other people to to fall back on to help me to you know get through it it would have been very very tough and very scary because I'm putting everything into building G Haven and like that was just a very scary year for me just to like overcome this mm. you know, the decisions need to be made and so for me personally like me getting to the other side you know me finally making back you know all the losses and really creating that foundation and, and that good and a good traction to keep moving forward you know I, I made it to, to that, to that or made it to the other side, made it over that hill. I mean, the other hills, of course, but like 
that that little year long hill, I, I finally could say that are right, I'm I, I, I've overcome this, and now and I have the support of people behind me who believed in GH, believed in me as a leader. It's like, awesome, and I want to show that you no, know, I'm an example that hey, you know, I, I went through something tough. It was really hard for me, and one reason why I could do is because I didn't keep it to myself. I, I, I seek other people to help talk to me, to the help talk to, uh, to give me the support, to give me that advice, just to just be that ear or to support any shape or form. And I was able to make it through. And so just like the help that, you know, financial economy could give, uh, you know, just that's the sort of thing I want people to remind that there are resources out there that they could fall to, whether it be your close circle or somewhere external that you can go to, to overcome and get to the other side. It makes me think of one of my favorite authors. And um, I know you're an author yourself of, I mean, you certainly have done an incredible amount in your life. And um, if I remember correctly, you've written a couple of fantasy novels uh, that have done quite well. So um, you are a very accomplished man. One of my favorite books, um, well, authors is John Maxwell, and he always um, sticks to the topics of leadership and leading with your team and never getting too ahead of them or never getting too behind them, just being with them, the whole team in partnership and how important it is. Um, I would imagine this is why you joined the association. I always love to ask people. It's certainly here for all those reasons that you mentioned and more. But mm -hmm. if I may, can I ask you why you joined? Yeah, of course. You know, um, during a uh, time late last year, I had uh, you know, encountered an individual, uh, uh, Caleb, and uh, he is a part of the association as well, Caleb Smith. and. Um, uh, he told me about ESTA, you know, a great place for networking. Uh, mainly, he told me also about because of the most recent uh, pitch event there for the conference. I was like, okay, that's cool. But me just being in, uh, you know, a a networking group where they knew the industry, they were aware of what beauty gaming esports was. Because for me, the biggest struggle I had was trying to pitch to investors or how to communicate about esports, about video gaming. And it's such a niche thing that not everyone knew about it. Not mm -hmm. everyone could understand it, see the potential in it. And so or people realized they saw something was happening, but they couldn't conceptualize it. They couldn't understand it. And I was finding around people who understood it. So I didn't have to try to break down, you know, what esports was or how it's growing. People already knew. I could focus on how do I properly build, how do I learn? How, yeah. what am I doing wrong? How can I get better? And so that was one of the best things. I've met so many people here just in, in the association. Just every time there was an event, you know, make sure my voice is heard at least once, you know, meet up with them outside, build that friendship, build a relationship. Because for me, the I my leadership style is always based upon the relationship aspect. You know, I would try to build the relationship. So there's that less of a, a, hier a hierarchical, point of view but more so like hey you know we're in this together we're a family yes everyone has their own position but you know we're in this together and so i use that as a means of how do i connect with people especially even in in, in the uh in different uh networks and different organizations like how do i connect with them and so me connecting with people even me connecting with a lot of the the great entrepreneurs the great leaders in the esta i've i've been given access to so much so many more resources that i would have never been able to find on my own and i really really enjoy being being a part of something that i could not only feel empowered by this but be around leaders as like you're doing this longer than me how do i do this better and find those teachers i, I always love that teacher student relationship why g haven that's an excellent question g haven esports is not like your average esports org or gaming org. A lot of them, they build a culture surrounding, you know, high performance, uh, being the best, uh, content creation, you know, entertainment. G Haven Esports 
we focus on bringing people together. That was the centerfold of everything we do, creating value from gaming. Video gaming, people think about it and they still sometimes think about it as just a place of entertainment, just a place or somewhere that, you know, if you want to kill time, hang out with friends, that's cool. But they don't really see the value from that. G Haven was built on the idea that video gaming created so much value for me, for the team that I've uh, put together, that we're growing this. That's what we want to show. Yes, we have our own competitive team. Yes, we have content creators, but we're using that to create a platform. And so everything we do, every, every uh, operations that we conduct, every event that we have is not just to entertain, but is to create value. And during this time, we believe that is more important than anything else right now to show that not only are we giving back to the community, but we are creating opportunities. We are establishing and giving value. We're just doing it through our passion because we are socially conscious gamers, understanding that our gaming comes with great power and can provide great positive impact. And we have a really good team within G Haven. As uh, Norman Megan stated in the very beginning, we are a company built by gamers for gamers. And that's one of the things that we uh, feel to bring to the attention that instead of having people coming outside, coming from, because a lot of people I've noticed, especially a trend uh, in ESTA, that a lot of people come in and come from the traditional sports section, the traditional sports industry. We uh, in G Haven, all of, and one of the major uh, requirements I would say would be that everybody has to be a gamer. I've had to have video gaming impact their life and be brought up in gaming in some way, shape, or form. And so we know what we want. We know uh, what we need. And I feel that's the best way to communicate is having someone who's in it to create the business idea, to create the models, to create the planning. And so of the, so my, I call him the EOO, my eSports operating officer. He is a 20 year veteran in competitive gaming. Now he's been with multiple different uh, different organizations competing in the highest levels in different games, just coming off of uh, most recently Fortnite and going into Call of Duty. And so he has a very, very good eye when it comes to different trends, especially in the competitive league. I have some of our other individuals, our writer, she an excellent writer, but she also has a love for video gaming and a passion for that as well. And a very fun and creative way of talking about a lot of important subjects that are happening in just the gaming community. And we need somebody like that. Also from a, 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 a black feminine voice, putting it out there, giving representation and reaching out in a way that people could relate and understand. And even our main content creator, he, you know, he is one who's very good in terms of tech. He has an amazing personality, giant big old teddy bear. And, but, and, but he, and as he gravitates people and makes them feel included because he knows what it feels like to not feel included and knows what it also feels like to, to give love and to feel love back. And so those are some of the more uh, amazing traits of our team. And so for our advisory board coming from, uh, actually another fellow Penn Stater. So uh, myself coming from Penn State, another fellow Penn Stater uh, here in Baltimore, uh, he helps a lot in terms of the business planning and uh, financial uh, future landscaping. Uh, he helped he helped us a lot. His name is uh, James Peterson. He's actually uh, the VP for the M&T Bank here in Baltimore. And we also have uh, a couple really good uh, individuals on our law team as well to help us navigate what we need in terms of building the corporate structure as well as looking into make sure that we create our draft our contracts in a way that allows us to you know, keep everyone protected but at the same time delivers what G Haven wants to be able to do with our contractees, if I may say. Um, and our biggest focus is to helping them grow. You know, really investing in them in a way that allows G Haven to not only uh, not, not only to help them invest in them to help them grow, the way that we're able to benefit as well. So what advice do you have? I mean, you have received one or two rounds of funding. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 
what's your advice for people that are just getting started? Because you've been at this a while. So the biggest question that is in esports right now is how do you monetize? And how I would put it very simply, esports isn't an end of itself, a means to an end. Esports and video gaming is a vehicle to improve the monetization and the revenue models of already established uh, businesses, already established ideas. If you can find a way to incorporate video gaming into some other model, some sort of idea in a very unique way, that is how you monetize esports. And that's really interesting. Um, you know, I know you have a strong background from Penn State and you're uh, an entrepreneur and very successful. Um, you talk a lot about what the last year has had for you virtually mm -hmm. and, you know, utilizing the opportunity that you had as a virtual experience. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Because that that's just such great feedback. Yeah, so there has been a really big push for a more virtual experience. And in the beginning, it was definitely interesting. So I tried to figure out what that looked like. And I think the pandemic uh, really, really gave a clear idea of not just for esports industry, but for all industries, the important value of having that virtual setting. Because what is when they have like this again and we're separated, how do you continue? And so one of the biggest trends that I'm seeing is that challenge of how do we continue carrying on business? How, how, do, how do we still have a convention that is entertaining, that is engaging than just having a you know a a a different different zoom uh web calls and having that down. how how do you make more something more engaging like that and there's been a push for more of that virtual world of that uh of that 3d virtual world and luckily for me one of my sponsors is actually uh, a company in baltimore called uh vr collab and they've actually created these little twins a alternative and auxiliary uh, 3D virtual venue space. And just based upon that, it really mocks the the experience of being in an in-person brick and mortar event. And so I definitely feel as though the the focus on how we interact on a virtual setting is really what's going to uh, dominate the next couple of years, even if we get back into the uh, to a place where every or everything's open 100%. How do we not incorporate the, the virtual side of things so that A, if it happens again, we can still move forward, or B, it's another way of interacting with uh, the, the end users and as well as reaching more people that we could before. It's been so great to see things open up in all areas. Um, I was just at a, a seminar last weekend and there was a lady that has not attended a seminar she's wanted to attend for, oh my God, oh, I think over 11 years because she was paralyzed. Mm. She was paralyzed from her neck down, mm. but she was able to be with us and she was so happy and tears were just running down her face because um, she was just part of the community and she was able to do it. And it was so, I mean, just, there has been a lot of things that have been good that have come from this. Do you have a technology in um, focus in your current G Haven that you would want to show us? Um, that is a, a like a demo for a virtual event, or is that something coming? Oh no, we have so uh, we definitely have that already. So we have a um, uh, a link to uh, a a demo of what an expo hall would look like. So what E3 could look like or what Comic-Con could look like in a 3D virtual setting. They say, we do have a video on, on YouTube and a link for that. If anyone wants, they could always come at me and we could, I could send it out. 
Um, but there is definitely a link that shows and it's ready and raring to go. So you can see what it looks like and how it is. Are there any other spaces like this? Yeah, so uh, the the engine is, the, the, the base platform is called Rebella. And they have multiple different campuses. Uh, some of them being conference halls, some of them being classrooms, some even like different business centers that you could use. And so there are a multitude of different uses for them. Very good, thank you. So we're coming up on the half hour here. Do you have any parting advice before we before we go? Esports and video gaming is such a fertile ground that in order to truly be successful in this space, you have to be creative. You have to do something new or something that hasn't been done before in the way that it's currently being done now. I feel as if we could find new ways of incorporating and using video gaming and esports in the uh, pop popular culture and in mainstream media, that is how uh, the esports industry could grow from a $1 billion industry to something even more. Well, that's amazing. Thank you, Dexter Carr at ghavenesports.com. Thanks for being on the show. And more of all, thank you for being a member of our community. You make us better. Of course. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be able to give back. 